already discussed previously about um, the amino compounds regarding the thiols and also uh, xylene ring and also ester. So for now we are doing and discussing about how we can synthesize this compound. And this is very important because um, during the final exam we will ask these kind of questions and hopefully you can understand during the, the sessions. We will have uh, a few sessions regarding training later when I'm coming back. So uh, for this, we are studying theory first and followed by discussions, the questions. So I already update uh, chapter eight, discussion questions. Hopefully you, you have to do that and we will discuss during the class. And uh, for tonight, we will uh, discuss about the carbocation rearrangements, which is uh, equally important. And what we, I can say is uh, often when the carbocations, when the carbocations are intermediates, a less stable carbocation will convert into the more stable, stable carbocation. More stable carbocations by the shift of hydrogens. If you have any, if you have the the highlighter you can highlight here okay by shifting the hydrogens of the alkyl halides so or alkyl halides uh, this is called a rearrangement and um, how do we know that a rearrangement okay there are, may be a product form that has a double bond in the unexpected locations so you have to form a very stable carbocation by shifting these two elements. The first one is uh, the first one is um, the hydrogens or the alkyl groups. Okay, the, in this case, okay, we have uh, we have three three dimethyl uh, butanol. Okay, which is this carbon is situated in the in the butanol butanol locations. So um, the hydrations happen during this process, and they will have a two product. Okay, the the first product, the, the first product, this one is the rearrangements of the alkyl groups, and the second one is the non rearrangements product, which is from the these substitutions, and of course the dehydration process will give you to uh, the water. So uh, it's up to you whether you want to put the water or not. So they will give you the water as a byproducts. Okay, for the carbon rearrangements, uh, because the migrating group is, uh, we call one, two shift. Okay, this is carbon number one, and this is carbon number two. That's why we call one, two shift. So uh, we have to move alkyl all the all the hydrogen group. So they will call one to hydride shift for the hydrogens or one to alkyl shift. So um, during that time, they they will have a carbocation rearrangement and make sure they are moved to the stable rearrangements during this time. So uh, the for this is an example of the mechanism one to shift process. So the first one, the formation of secondary carbocation and rearrangements. Okay. And also, if you see clearly here, okay, uh, we know that uh, as we know previous slide, what we discuss is uh, we know that uh, OH is the very uh, weak uh, living group so we have to convert weak living group by extracting proton from the sulfuric acid and transform it become a strong living groups and after that heterolysis co bond okay in this process heterolysis co bond and form the second carbocations so in this process for the second carbocations uh, they have a uh, migrations of the alkyl this this situation we call one two alkyl shift and form the tertiary carbocation which is more stable this is related with the zef rules 
So make sure you understand what is the definition of ZZF rules. And after that, you can easily understand about the uh, hydride shift or alkyl shift, which is referred as a one two shift. So the second part, okay, uh, during that time, you will uh, lose a proton to form a pi bond. In this case, you have two possibilities. During this time, you already have this carbocation. You have two possibility to remove the beta protons. Okay, the first one in these positions, which is beta or number one, and they will extract the proton and also form a new pi bond, which is this uh, product, which is I can call product A. And after that, the next beta hydrox, which is situated at number two, they will give a second product, which is product number B. Okay, they have two different alkene in this time. So, okay, so so okay, in this one two hydrox shift uh, alkene shift, for example, can convert to the less stable carbocations into a more stable carbocation, and rearrangements are not unique to uh, dehydration reactions. Rearrangements uh, can occur whenever a carbocation is formed as a reactive intermediates. And the second carbocations, this is very important, the second carbocation A, the arrangements to the st more stable tertiary carbocations by the 1,2 hydrox shift, whereas carbocation B does not rearrange because the tertiary to begin with, okay. We have, for example, we have secondary carbocation in these positions, okay. We have a secondary carbocation in these positions. And after that, uh, okay, now I have to allow your friends to enter. Okay, they, for example, we have a secondary carbocation here. So uh, this time we refer as hydrate shift. So they will do rearrangements by converting the secondary carbocations to the tertiary carbocations. In this case, they are formed a very stable carbocation. In these situations, uh, for the B, for example, there are no tertiary carbocations. So I mean, uh, it's mean there are they are already tertiary carbocations, so they are already stable. Stables. There are no rearrangements. So the hydration of uh, the next, okay, the first one, okay, uh, is the dehydration reactions to form uh, alkenes, okay. For this time, is the hydration of alcohol using TOCl three, okay. The first one we are using separate acid and the second one we are using POCl3. Okay, so anybody can write this is the second one. Okay. So some organic compound composed in the presence of very strong acids, for example, separate acids. So there is another method to develop to convert alcohol to alkenes. Okay. And A common method that we use is phosphorus oxychloride, POCl3, and pyridine, as, uh, which is an amine base, um, in place of uh, just replacing sulfuric acid or also paratolid sulfuric acid. Okay. There is another option. You can use POCl3 to do uh, dehydrations, but, and the final product, of course, we can get cyclohexanes. Okay. Make sure. If you use this kind of reagents, uh, you can you have to put POCl3 and together with PDT. Okay. So uh, it's converts uh, again, okay, it's converts a uh, poor living group, which is in this situation is OH groups into a good living group. So in this kind, uh, this process, uh, the hydrations 
proceed by using E2 mechanism. So this is uh, the mechanism uh, happen when we use POCL3 in existing as a pyridine as a base. Make sure this one is E2 mechanism. So you have to refer back again chapter eight. So anybody you have highlight. So if you want to use this kind of product, you have to mention both reagents here and also E2 mechanism first. Okay, the first one to the second one, the <clears throat> we have to convert. Uh, convert poor living group, which is OH, to the good living groups, okay? And after that, uh, the bonds are broken and form, uh, two bonds are formed, okay? This role, we are using pyridine to extract the acidic proton in these situations. And the base, okay, remove the proton and electron pi at the beta position. This is the beta positions. Uh, form a pi bond and uh, the living group. Okay, in this in this situation, the living group will be depart or remove, and form a cyclic descent here. So for the hydra um, the hydration reactions happen in organic uh, in natural product synthesis. Okay, for example, this uh, peculi alcohol. Okay, it has been used in perfumery industry because it's exotic fragrance. So uh, the hydration reactions in the synthesis in two uh, natural product compounds from here. In this case, they are using uh, paratonisulfonic acids. Okay, and first again, they will do uh, convert OH to the good living groups. And after that, because they has a secondary positions here and um, they have to move hydrac hydrogens so and form uh, vitamin A. And again, this is the first example. The second examples, they are using <coughs> phosphorium oxyl chloride, okay, in existing of pyridine and they are doing the same process. The first one, they have to convert OH to the good living groups. And after that, to get alkenes with uh, several steps, this compound can be synthesized. And this is very uh, important in perfume industries. Okay, we cannot uh, get this from the from the nature because we have to um, we have to uh, first we need in big quantity, uh, and we have to harvest all of them to get a very minor co-product. So that's why. The idea for the organic synthesis has been come through for this process. Okay. So next we have to uh, proceed with the conversions of alcohol to alkyl halides with HX. We know uh, that uh, in chapter seven and eight we already studied that uh, alkyl halide is a good living group. So why not we have to convert it alcohol to the alkyl halides. Okay, the substitution do not occur with alcohol. Okay, if you realize the earliest stage of these chapters, we have to convert directly OH to the alkenes. So it's not, it's it only involved the elimination reactions, not the substitution. So how we can do the substitution reactions? So we have to convert alcohol group to alkyl halides. Okay, conversions alcohol to alkyl halide by using HX. Okay, it can be chloride, bromide, or iodide to, for easy to get it excess. Usually we have use chlorine, chloride, and also bromide. Okay, the reaction alcohol with HX is a general method to prepare the primary, secondary, and tertiary alkyl halides. Okay, for example, this is very simple alcohols. We have hydrogen bromides and we'll give the types of alkyl halides okay and we have to understand that uh, more substituted alcohol usually react more rapidly in hx eh? because uh, we have learned in chapter seven and eight so please uh, understand again why we um, the substitution is increased from primary secondary and tertiary so for the mechanism of reactions of alcohol with uh, hx in order of reactivity can be rationalized by considering the reaction mechanism involved. The mechanism depend on the structure of R. It's mean it's depend the substitutions here. 
Okay, so the first and also the methyl uh, methyl groups. Okay, uh, methyl alcohols. Okay, form Rx by SN2 reaction. Anybody we have highlighted, you can highlight this one. Okay, SN2 mechanisms. The secondary and tertiary OH uh, form Rx by using SN1 mechanism. SN2 mechanism is we uh, when if we recall about this one, this is spontaneous reactions, um, no formation of reactive intermediates. Meanwhile, SN2 reactions they have to go first. Okay, OH have to go first, followed by formation of carbocations, and uh, and the less uh, they have the possibility to attack from the top and from the bottom. Okay. So this is the mechanism for reaction for primary, which is involving the SN2 mechanisms. Okay, first uh, there have been a protonations. Again, so you have to proceed with uh, the formations of uh, poor living group to the good living groups. Okay, and after that the second one, which is this this process. Okay, first one is the protonations. Anybody who have highlighted can uh, pen. You can pen right right here. It's a protonations. Okay, the second one is after that, uh, this bromine acts as a nucleophile, and nucleophile will attack carbon deficient in this position. So, anybody you have a uh, pen, you can put delta. Wait. <clears throat> anybody you have pen here, you can put delta plus in say, this one. It's already the top part. So this one is more carbon deficient here. So nucleophile is favorable to put here. So accidentally they will move and form a new highlight groups. Okay. This is one step because SN2 rations. So for the SN1 rations, it's only involved in the secondary and tertiary alcohol. Okay, first, of course, we have to be a protonation first. Uh, converting OH to the good living groups, and after that, OH will remove, okay, and form carbocation. And again, uh, bromines, okay, we will attack at the position carbocation, where they are at the top and at the bottom. So, in these situations, uh, they are not mentioned about the, the symmetry or the geometry of compounds, so for sure they will have a racemic mixture. So for the reactivity of halogen halides, okay, we can know uh, chlorine, bromine, and also iodines going down to the group 17. The reactivity uh, of halogens halide increase with increasing the acidity. So for the chlorines, uh, it's a poorer nucleophile than bromine or iodines. And reactions primary alcohol with HCl occur only when the additionals of Lewis acids like zinc chloride is. Uh, if you remember in chapter in chapter six, uh, you already said uh, we already discussed about the, the contribution of a uh, catalyst. It will reduce the activation energy. It's mean for the poor nucleophile like chlorines they will speed it up the reactions by a, with existing of uh, zinc, zinc chlorides, okay? This is Lewis acid, zinc chloride. And the complexations of zinc chloride with the oxygen atom of the alcohol make a very good living groups. And this will facilitate for the SN2 reactions. So again, okay, this is the mechanisms. If you are using H hydrogen chloride here, and uh, make sure you put zinc chloride together, okay? For the stereochemistry of reaction of alcohol with HX, okay? Knowing the mechanism allow us to predict the stereochemistry, the product when the reaction of the at a stereogenic center, okay? This one doesn't have any stereogenic center, okay? That's why they are ignoring the, the stereo, stereochemistry of the final products. So you have to go in back to the definition of stereogenic center. Anybody who have a pen here, you can put just a simple note. So what is stereogenic center? Stereogenic center is the carbon that attached together with four substitution groups. 
So for example, this is the alcohol. Okay, primary, primary alcohol we can see here. Okay, so um, they are using HBr. Okay, it's involved SN2 ration. So, and after that, we know that SN2 ration involved inversion configuration. So, next example is the tertiary alcohol, tertiary alcohols. So, by referring the mechanisms, in this case, you are using HCl, but uh, make sure you put zinc chloride. And also, they will give a racemic mixture because they are following the SN1 rules. First, they have to remove the they have to do protonations and the second one they have to remove this uh, oh2 plus from uh, carbocations so the carbocation lastly have the ability to attack from the top and the, from the bottom because during that time you have the empty carbocations around 120 degrees okay i hope you understand about this one clearly about this one so if you put hbr it's okay if you put HCl, you need zinc chloride, okay, as a catalyst. So next, conversion of alcohol to alkyl halides with thionyl chloride. Anybody you have pen here, you can put thionyl, T-H-I-O-N-Y-L, thionyl chloride, and PBR3. For the primary and secondary alcohol can be converted into the alkyl halide using thionic chloride and also PBR3. So this is another source of chlorine and also bromine. So instead of using hydrogen bromine, hydrogen chloride, or hydrogen iodide, you can use these two chemicals to convert alcohol to alkyl halide. So the thionic chloride can convert into alkyl chlorides, okay? So meanwhile, for the phosphorus tribromide, converted alcohol into alkyl bromide, okay? Both reagents uh, convert OH into the good living group in C2, and uh, it means spontaneous, okay? There is directly in the rice mixture as well as a provide of nucleophile, uh, the Cl, which is referred to the thionic chloride, and so O bromide, which is referred to phosphorus Tribromide to be placed in living group, but uh, PBR3 I think is not allowed to enter Malaysia now. Okay, I have the last bottle, but that one is already decomposed. But thionyl uh, in Malaysia, we need to have uh, at least six months, and we need the license from uh, Ministry of Health to bring in. This is the challenge when we do chemistry here. So. Okay, the next is a conversion alcohol to alkyl chloride by using thionyl chloride, okay, as a source of chlorine. So when primary and secondary alcohol treated with thionyl chloride and pyridine, if you use thionyl chloride, make sure you put together with pyridine as a base and the alkyl chloride is formed um, with HCl and SO2 as a byproduct, okay. This mechanism, uh, the mechanism for this reaction consists the two part. Okay, again, okay, conversion of OH for the good for the poor from the poor living group to the better living groups. The second one, nucleophilic substitutions of the chlorine by using SN2 reaction. So this is the mechanism. So okay, number one, number two, as I said, they have to uh, do some uh, conversion of the Poor living group to the good living groups and after that number one and uh, number two and lastly they are going for the nucleophilic attack okay okay next we will move to the uh, conversion alcohol to the alkyl bromides by using PBR3 okay treatments primary and secondary alcohol with PBR3 alkyl form and the alkyl halide which is the alkyl bromide so this is an example for the primary and secondary alkyl bromides. And after that, the mechanism also consists, which is two part. Again, conversion of OH into the better living groups. And the lastly, nucleophilic substitutions. In this time, from PBR3, they can produce a PBR, PBR bromide. 
anions and do substitutions by using SN2 reaction. Okay, uh, refer again chapter seven, so you will know the, the mechanism. And this is the mechanism again, okay, uh, I repeat so many times. So first we have to convert to the OH to the good living groups and after that nucleophilic attacks. If you realize uh, for the toyonyl chloride, you have uh, three step. For meanwhile, for the PBR3, you have only two step. Okay. Uh, as a summary for method uh, conversions of uh, alcohol to the alkyl helix, okay. So if you want to convert uh, alcohol to the chloride, so you can use two. The first one is the HCl, okay. So, and the second one is thionyl chloride, okay. So, uh, useful to uh, all alcohol uh, and SN1 mechanism for the tertiary, uh, tertiary and secondary alcohol. Meanwhile, SN2 mechanism for primary alcohol. Okay, for the thionyl chloride, the best is for the primary and also methyl, okay, and secondary alcohol. And they are using only one mechanism, which is SN2 mechanism okay if you want to convert alcohol to the bromines what you can use you can use hbr and meanwhile uh you can use pbr3 they have a pro and contra between hbr and pbr3 make sure you understand about this one okay because if you use hbr they are different between involving sn1 or sn2 rations meanwhile for the pbr if you see clearly here okay they are only uh, for the SN2 mechanisms. Uh, for the iodide, I think we don't use too much for hydrogen iodide. So normally we are referring to the uh, chloride and also bromine. Okay, make sure you know when you want to use HCl, when you want to use uh, SO thionic chloride, when we want to use uh, hydrogen bromide and uh, PBR3. Okay, toxicate as a good living groups. Okay, alcohol can be converted into alkyl toxicate. So this is the the new chemistry. I think it's the new chemistry. Okay, so an alkyl toxicate uh, is composed, which is two part, the alkyl groups. Okay, derived from the alcohol and toxicate short form for para toluene sulfonates, which is good living groups. Okay, I I I I think I I will prepare one questions. Explained about the applications of uh, toxicate for converting poor living groups into very uh, good and also active living groups. Okay. So formations of uh, formations uh, of the toxicates alcohol can be converted into toxicates uh, by treatment of paratonisulfonyl chloride. Okay. But uh, tol toluene sulfonyl chloride in the presence of pyridine. Make sure if you use PT uh, para toluene sulfonyl chloride, make sure you have pyridines. Okay. So uh, this process convert a poor living group OH into the good living group, which is toxicate. And if you refer to chapter two, toxicate is a good living group because the conjugate base. If I say conjugate base, you know what is that. It's a paratonin sulfonic acid, PTSA. It's a strong acid with PKA minus seven. Okay. And the cell chemistry of the toxicate formations. For example, we have two butanol here. Okay. And after that, we're converting into toxicate. And they have retention of configuration. It means the configuration is not changed. Anybody who have highlighted, you can highlight here. Okay, you can highlight in this. Okay, and it's slogenic symptom. So it's mean for the S starting material, it will give also S configurations. Okay, because uh, the form CO bond in the alcohol is not broken when toxicate form. Okay, because if you see clearly the, 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 the new form bond formation is between oxygens okay is between oxygens and also uh hydrogens here so it's not involved the new chiral carbon here so that's why 
the, the, the configuration is written. Okay, the substitutions and also elimination of toxylates because I kill, alkyl toxylates have good living groups. They undergo both nucleophilic substitutions and also beta elimination exactly as alkyl halide too. So generally, these alkyl toxylates are treated with the strong nucleophile and base. So the mechanism involved in this one is the SN2. Anybody who have highlighter, you can highlight here. SN2 and also E2. For example, we have uh, propyl toxylates. Okay, we already convert a uh, poor living group and good living group. This one. Anybody who have highlighter, you can put here is a good living group here. So you have strong nucleophile in this case. Okay, nucleophile will attack spontaneously the chiral carbon deficiency here. So it will involve SN2 mechanisms and give you substitution product okay meanwhile if we are okay meanwhile also if you are using the strong non-nucleophilic base it means it will extract the first the beta beta uh, hydrogens here okay and form a elimination product by using e2 mechanisms so it's mean if you are using um, alkyl toxylate here, okay, and during that time you are using a uh, strong, strong nucleophile, strong nucleophile here, it will involve SN2 mechanisms. If you are using strong and non nucleophilic base like this, potassium topotoxides, which is very famous here, famous, okay, so it will involve only E2 elimination products. SN2 inversions when replacing toxylates. Because the substitution occur by using SN2, if you recall again chapter 7, part 1, you will see we will cover first SN2 mechanisms. It's inverse, uh, involve the inversion configurations. So they will go to the same process. So they will go, of course, they will give you inversion configuration product. So if we see clearly here, the configuration, the configuration is changed. Okay, so in this case, the kira, uh, the living group involved in on the planes, so you are not uh, touch uh, the the alpha and beta composition. Alpha it's mean on the front, and the beta and at the back. So the living group is not that positions. So it's happened like this. So if they are attack. Uh, if the toxylic group involved in in uh, chiral, which is alpha or beta positions, so the configurations will be will be changed. So overall inversions of stereochemistry. Step one: okay, formation of toxylate proceed with the retention of configurations. Okay, if we see here, for example, we have cis products. Okay, and we have uh, we during that time we proceed we do um, replacing or converting the poor uh, poor living group to the good mm -hmm. and after that and after that uh, you you will see during that time they are do done some retention of configurations it's mean the configuration is not changed and after that the step two, okay, you have the strong nucleophilic right here. Phyllis Cassini is strong nucleophile, okay. So it will proceed with inversion configurations because a nucleophilic attack from the backside. In these situations, they involve SN2 reaction. So put here, this is SN2 reaction. Here is SN2. I'm sorry, my, my pen is not working tonight. I'm not sure why. So uh, I urge you to write SN2 reactions. So the overall is the net inversion configuration at the serogenic center. If you see clearly here, okay, this uh, living group, toxylate groups, when you remove, it will change the configuration. Put a, a red dot here, it's mean the, the carbon. 
Okay, the summary of uh, substitution and elimination reaction of alcohol. As a summary, what I can say is, okay, first we know that OH is a, uh, put the notes here, OH is a poor living group. So you have to convert to strong living group. The first one, we, what we have covered is, uh, we can do uh, dehydrations by using two steps, you know, two, two chemicals. The first one is sulfuric acids, okay. And the second one, POCl3. But if you want to use POCl3, you have to put together with pyridine. Okay. And the second one, okay, um, we have, uh, we covered how to convert the strong living, uh, the poor living group, which is OH, to the alkyl halide, which is referred as a good living groups. So in this case, you can use uh, hydrogen halide, okay. Um, you can use HCl, HBr, or hydrogen iodide. But if you use HCl, make sure you have Lewis acid catalyst, which is uh, zinc chloride, ZNCl2. Okay. Another option that you can use, you can use thionic chloride and, or, to convert OH to the chlorines or PBR3 to convert OH to bromine. So again, you have two options. You can attack with a nucleophile or a bulky base. Okay. If you attack the nucleophile, you can get the substitution products. If you attack with a bulky base like um, potassium tetrabutoxide, you can get the elimination products. Again, okay. In this uh, last one, we already covered how to convert OH by using toxicity groups. Make sure you mention pyridine as a base. And after that, again, by doing this one, is a retention configurations. Put notes here, retention configurations. And after that, this one for the substitution inversion configurations. And also this one is a E2 elimination product if you use bulky base. Okay. So next, we will cover about ration of uh, ether with strong acid. See, okay, we still have time. In order for it to undergo substitution and elimination reactions, okay, their poor living group must first be converted into good living groups by reaction with the strong and very strong strong acid. Uh, for example, it's not involving hydrogen chloride. You have to put hydrogen bromide and also hydrogen iodide. Okay, because the going down group seventeen, okay, the uh, the reactivity of Hydrogen halides will be increased. So for the both uh, hydrogen halide, okay, the strong acid are also source of a good nucleophile, respectively. So when ether react with both hydrogen bromide and hydrogen iodide, both CO bond are cleave and two alkyl halide are formed as a product. This is an example here. For example, we have uh, this uh, two part. Here, the first is the second uh -huh. part. The second one is the bromine part. Okay. So, uh, when you react with the strong acid, you will get directly the, the book products. This is uh, how we can explain about, we know that, uh, uh, that the ester is a uh, ether, ether is uh, cannot involve uh, easily for the, uh, any reactions that we discuss. So next. So the mechanism of ether cleavage, okay, the mechanism of ether cleavage uh, is SN1 or SN2 depend on the identity of R. So when, okay, anybody you have highlighted, you can highlight here. Secondary or tertiary alkyl, halide, uh, alkyl groups are bonded to the ether oxygens, the CO bond cleave by the SN2, SN1 mechanism involving the formation of carbocations. Okay. So when methyl or the primary R groups, um, the CO bond cleavage at the SN2 mechanism. And this is explained in this figure, so this is the tertiary archaecarbons, 
decay the cleavage by using SN1 variations. Anybody we have highlighter? Highlight here and highlight here. Okay. And meanwhile, for the methyl, okay, it's a uh, methyl O primary. Okay. It will involve uh, SN2 reactions. So this is the mechanisms how it involves. They start with the protonations and also cleavage and lastly nuclear attack. Okay, this one is protonations. To this is any protonation. This one is cleavage, and this one is nucleophilic substitutions. Okay. And this is for the tertiary. Okay. Put again this example here to this one. It's a continuations. Okay. The second one for the methyl, okay, protonation at the OH group, so okay, protonations, and also directly the uh, nucleophilic attack. Okay, this one is SN2, and this one is SN1. Okay. For thiol and also uh, sulfites, okay, thiol uh, sulfites are sulfur analogs of alcohols. It means we're replacing alcohol. Alcohol, eh? for example, imagine we have oxygen here. We call alcohol. In this time, we change our oxygen with sulfur, and we call thiols. Okay. And imagine this one. If we put oxygen here, we call ether. Okay. So these times we replacing oxygen to uh, sulfur, and it's become sulfides. Okay. So this is uh, another groups. So thiol alcohol mecaptans, another name of that. Okay, thiol content mecapto group, which is HH groups, mecapto groups bonded to the carbon atoms. Thiol are incapable uh, to heter intermolecular hydrogen atom uh, bonding. So and this also have a lower boiling point and melting point compared to alcohol, okay, with a similar number of carbon. Bond. This is an example. Ethyl thiol is a boiling point is around 35 degrees C. If we talk about ethanol, it's 78 degree, degrees C. So how to name these compounds? Okay, thiol uh, name is similar method to alcohol using suffix OL, a uh, thiol instead of OL, it means OL change with thiol. Name the parent carbon change and add the suffix thiol. And next, uh, the number of carbon change to give the HH group the lower number and apply uh, uh, the same uh, rules in nomenclature. For example, this one, okay, we can easily name from here one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, but because this one's uh, the tire, the makeup 10 groups placing in the carbon number three. So we can, you can, you can start from any directions here. So in this one, this time we call pentane three tiles. If we have oxygens here, we will call it pentane three, three all. Okay. So the next example is, okay. The first one, if you get this one, so you have to start with the uh numbering the carbons but make sure the uh the mccaptain group which is a lower number so in this case we can start we have to start from here first the mccaptain group uh, situation at the number two so you can put here the substitutions methyl is number four here so it's become four methyl hexanes because you have six bond one two three four five and six and make sure you put two and replacing with thiol because the mecaptan group situated at carbon number two. Okay. Next, if we try to naming as a, as a cyclics, you have to put the purity, which is a mecaptan group as a number one. So in this case, you have to do um, clockwise directions. Okay. Uh, and imagine if you have methyl here instead of here, you can follow by anticlockwise. Okay, so it's named with two methyl because the position of methyl group is number two, cyclohexane thiol because 
the tile group is a number one position. Okay. Next, uh, let me see the time now. Okay, I think that's all for today. We will continue to learn about the preparations of uh, and direction of tile, which is equally important. I think that's all for today. Thank you very much.